Let's play Never Have I Ever real quick. Never have I ever gone to give a confession in church and said like, Father, I have sinned. And then I went out after telling them all my sins. And then a nun that was outside was like chuckling and laughing like your sins are nothing compared to mine. I mean, yeah, ne never. I, w I wouldn't drink in that case because that, that did not happen to me. But the protagonist of this story... <laughs> But I have a feeling that the protagonist of the story I'm going to be telling you about today uh, has done something similar along those lines. Like, I wouldn't put it past her. Hi, you look lost, but I think we have just found you. My name is Maya, and this is Gone Bad. It's a new series, it's fresh off the press. If you follow this channel, you probably know I have another one, which is a podcast that's called By All Means Necessary. May I direct you there, because there is plenty of content if you like the content that this channel produces, you will like that one as well. That being said, why I started that podcast in the first place is because it always fascinates me how media portrays these criminals as monsters, and usually they're not. They're like ordinary people that have snapped or have been triggered or have had a childhood of abuse, and all those circumstances have made them go bad. So this series is there to kind of support that interest in a different way. So expect to hear cases of wild stories of killer nuns like today. The next case I plan to cover is a cop that has gone bad. Along those lines, right? So people who are doing ordinary jobs and then have suddenly switched to crime. I will put a case suggestion form as a pinned comment so you guys can fill out what other things you would like me to cover in this category. There are so many, there are so many interesting ones, so I'm excited. But now, without further ado, kill a nun. Let's go. I'm about to transport you to a Belgian city, to 1960s and 1970s, when this story takes place. The city is called Veteran, and with the last headcount that, that I could find from 2006, it had about 23,000 people, so probably even less back then. So, just roughly, it's not the smallest city, it's not the smallest place I will ever talk about here on this channel, but it's probably not the biggest either. And Veteran is located in the Belgian province of East Flanders and is one of those typical places that you see on Instagram. I think it's actually really close to Ghent or Gent. I never know how to pronounce it and I never bothered. But basically, very typical for a Belgian city, like very old buildings. Seems like there's loads of culture, but not much to do. I'm gonna get hate. <laughs> in one such town, Cecile Monbique grew up. And ever since the early age, she would go to church regularly, so she became really passionate about it, and she knew she was going to choose that path for herself. However, in my personal opinion, she chose it too early, but she decided to devote her life to it since the age of 15. This is when she joined the Order of Holy Joseph, and she, while working and living in this cloister, so she was already working to become a nun, she was also working in the adjacent old people's homes. So she was studying to become a nun, and then, as her part-time job, she was helping out the elderly. With age, she became Sister Gottfrieda. When I say sister, I'm referring to a term that you would refer when addressing a nun. So she changed from Cecile to Sister Gottfrieda. I'm not referring to her predicting James Charles and his career and how he is going to address his fans, okay? Just to clarify that. Yeah, are you done? Did you get it out of your system now? So she became nun, and then, due to her hard work, due to her perfectionism really in her work in the industry, she was appointed Mother Superior. For 30 years, not a bad word has been spoken of the Mother Superior, but Frida now, not a single word until... Three nuns walked into a police station. So sisters Pieta, Francisca, and Godly walked in, and the policers were like already like taken aback a bit. Like it's not every day that nuns just walk into the police station, and they could tell that these nuns could not wait to tell them this story. And apparently, the way you tell that a nun just can't wait because she justifies it. She's like, listen, we have reconciled, we have done a lot of soul searching, and we realized we must report it. This is a crime. What she's doing is a crime. And then the police officer is there, like, so tell me what is she. And I can imagine that the three of them are just there, like, fighting which one is gonna tell them what. 
So the officer leans back in his chair and he's like, oh, they're gonna complain about like some loud music or something, like what could this possibly be? And Francisca opens this confession with, when 21 out of 38 die in a year, it's too much. Yeah, no shit. Why are we only reporting this now, Francisca? What is going on? What has she been doing to 21 out of 38 people? That's not like a best ratio to have as a nun. And probably because the police officer asked them the same exact question, the three of them opened their diaries. Oh yeah, they brought receipts. In these diaries, they had seven years worth of monitoring this mother superior now, because that's how long she has been doing it for. But the straw that broke the camel's back was when she started whipping them as a discipline method, or according to them, for no reason at all. But that was not all, because Mother Superior, for all these years, while on the surface she's presenting herself as this helpful perfectionist, like the epitome of everything good in this convent, what she is doing is technically torturing people that are in her care. Because if you remember, she is both a nun, but she's also working and attending to her patients in this care home. Other example of her torture against the elderly that were left in her care by nurses and the nuns once they started investigating this was also pulling catheters, I never know how to pronounce the word, out of their bladders, like violently, without any need. She was just removing catheters when the patients definitely needed them. So the police proceeds to ask, okay, Okay, this is a wild statement, we'll definitely investigate, but do you have any names? Like, this kind of sounds like, yeah, you have been noting stuff down for seven years, got any names? Of course, they delivered, and they said her latest victim was called Maria van der Gunst. And this woman was 87 at the time. She has done basically the same thing like with everybody else, but here they think the motivation was monetary as well. Because once Maria died, well... Sister Godfrida, Mother Superior, whatever you want to call her at this point, Cecile, she has benefited from inheriting her jewels and money and suddenly feeding her expensive tastes, suddenly showing up in like a luxurious nun cloth. Mm -hmm. that, that was a sentence. That was what you went with. So the cops are like, okay, this is drama. Listen, you go back to your convent, you go back to your work, we're definitely gonna look into it. We have to tell this woman. So they do. Once they started tailing her, they immediately went to the seaside resort because, okay, she's living lavishly now. This cloister where she works apparently has a resort, but she's not there by herself. She is enjoying ungodly activities, as this article smartly and nicely said it. Uh, with another sister, with another nun, Sister Matthew. And the officers are just observing this whole scene, like how they're behaving on the beach, and they observe them drink, enjoy dinner, being very close to each other, and as it progresses, fondle each other. Love the word fondle. Would use it any time in any text, ever. That is the extent this article went to. Basically intending to say this was a lesbian relationship. Can you imagine those cops in the car, like, you know, with, like, telescopes and stuff? Just being like, we, we thought this was wild, but this is, like, next level. Also, how legendary would this plot be if she didn't turn to crime? Like, she, she was just, like, none, like, a revolutionary nun. She could have revolutionized everything. She could have been like, okay, cool, you know, I started. This is why you don't get into religion when you're too young. And also, you know, I'm kind of, like, coming out as a nun. This is what, I can still be a nun and be a lesbian. She could have revolutionized everything. She could have changed the world. But no, she chose to change it in a fucking different way. After encountering this relationship, the police go back to their office and they kind of start researching, piecing together, like, when did it start? To make a timeline for themselves and to find out, like, who the victims are, how many are there, like, how substantial these claims that these three nuns have made truly are. And they look into her history and her medical records and see in 1976, so two years prior, these three nuns walked into the police station, Cecile von Beek, or Sister Gottfrieda, had a brain tumor and she had to operate on it. And back in the day, painkillers weren't really a thing, so they would give her large amounts of morphine to keep her sedated. However, 
because of how long this was taking, because of how much morphine it was, because of how painful it was, she got hooked onto it. And soon they start connecting the dots. So she's hooked on morphine. Morphine or just narcotics in general aren't illegal, but they are costly. They are not inexpensive at all. So they are starting to pick up a pattern here and realize that the motivation, yes, is monetary, but is also supplying and feeding her addiction. So around the same time that the police is now on to her, they're looking into it, they see that she is still on and off with rehabs. She has actually checked into rehab for the third time for her morphine addiction. And they're like, this is perfect. This is how we get her. So they go into this care home, this hospital, where she works with the elderly, and they tell them, listen, she's gonna get released for the third time from the rehab. Just don't let her come back. Question her, immediately confront her on the deaths of all these people. Be like, listen, you have killed three people between June and August 1977. What's that all about? Nonchalantly, she says. <laughs> What's that all about? And the plan was put into action once the hospital actually confronted her. She starts telling the tales. So they're like, okay, hold, hold, hold that thought, hold that thought, police, please. We're we, we about to get the confession. Come in here. Let's, like, let's just wait for a second. The police comes and she finally confesses. However, remember how nuns have said she killed about 27 people? So, like, over 20? She only confessed to those three that they have pinned on her, that they have had some evidence on her. And why they have evidence? Well, because again, just like with her morphine addiction, she just doesn't know how to stop when it comes to medication. So she has given them overdose of insulin. And insulin injections are used to keep the sugar content down in the blood of diabetics. But when you give it in high doses to non-diabetic people, it can cause the opposite reaction. So the drop in blood glucose that then this injected person will go into coma or will die after just a couple of hours. Her motive, what she said was her motive, is that they were too difficult at night. But she said she did it sweetly and none of them suffered. Sweetly. She's pulling out stuff out of their bladders giving them insulin that is gonna cause them to, like, lapse into coma and fresh. Then why work the job, girl? This is so triggering, because as you know from this channel or from the podcast, I'm really close to my great-grandma. Why kill them, girl? Just let them leave, like, give the job to somebody else. Like, it's a hard job to care for the elderly. You need to love those people to care for them. You just drop it and go work, like, continue with your miserable non-life. But the police thought, A, she was supporting her drug addiction, so her morphine addiction, and B, also she loved living this lavish lifestyle. She thought she deserved it. At times, it was said that she would embezzle or, like, just make people sign off, you know, their jewelry, property, money. At time, like, $30,000 for the time, which is probably, like, millions now. Okay, it's not millions. It would be around, like, 200000 Still, baller, okay? So as the police is interrogating her, they're like, okay, we actually have a name. People have come forward with a name. Maria van der Gunst rings any bells? To which this nun does not give a fuck. I think like she knew she was caught. What she said is, yes, indeed, I sent her to heaven because she was too noisy. She disturbed my sleep. This is why this case enrages me, because she was the mother superior. She could have technically bossed every single person around. She didn't have to do any of this. She didn't have to do this job. Just give it to somebody else. After this interrogation, the police had a plentiful. They decided to do the next best thing, which was to exhume some of those bodies. So they got permission to exhume actually five, so not even three, but five of them. Maria van der Gustman wasn't that useful because that woman was already taking insulin. So yes, the autopsy technicians found insulin in her body, but it wasn't unusual. However, the other bodies spoke a different story. The police also looked at the medical records and death certificates studiously of all the people at this old people's home. And they indicated that she has sent over 30 people to heaven. Where I was like, okay, I, I see what you have done there. I see it. I would have probably, as a journalist, taken that chance as well myself. I don't fully respect it, though, but sure. However, they have only exhumed five of the bodies and could prove that three of them were never diabetics and they found insulin in their system, meaning that she was connected to those. 
So she was only indicted for three crimes. And there was never a trial because she was given a psychological exam and they have concluded that she is mentally unfit to stand trial. I am not sure for what reason. Is it to do with her addiction? Is it to do with her actual mental state? There is no information on this online. And she was, due to that, just committed to the psychiatric institution. From this point on, the trail really goes cold and we know nothing else on Cecile Mombic or Sister Gottfrieda. From Murderpedia and other pages, I think she has actually died the same year, so 78 or 77. Again, I couldn't find the cause of death. So it is as if from the moment she was hospitalized, she has just disappeared off the face of the earth. Well, actually, that's a bit of a lie. Because her story partially inspired a movie in 1979 that is called Killer Nun. You might not have watched this one. I watched like 60 seconds of the trailer and I was like, this is it for me. I don't think this is the kind of movie that I would like to watch. And uh, I have learned the word that to describe that feeling that I was feeling when watching that trailer. Uh, the word is non-exploitation. You know how you have exploitation of something? that is the exploitation of nuns. Because, of course, they dramatized on her affair. I think they even introduced an affair with a priest, which, as you could see from any source that I have read, I could not find that that was ever confirmed, that somebody like that was ever present. So it's very much just like on the sexual side and not in a good way. How would they have presented the sexual side of, of nuns in a good way? So that is the story of Cecile Bombique. The saddest part of it for me, well, everything is sad when it comes to this story, but that outcome that 30 plus people might have been killed by her and their families just don't know. They just think that they died of natural causes or of some overdose of a drug that basically they weren't even taking at the time. And that they could only get her on three murders. And as always, what fascinates me when it comes to these stories is that they are brilliant at a certain part of their life and then they just, at some point, decide to go off the rails. Here it was just feeding her addiction and it was monetary gain. She loved living this lavish lifestyle. Again, she could have done that as a nun. Or she didn't have to work for the care home. She didn't have to have all these pretenses and live her perfect life in the eyes of the public while murdering on the side. So I guess moral of the story, if you are brilliant in something, stick to it or change careers and then be brilliant in something else and don't get addicted to drugs because then you have to support that. I still can't believe that I'm not telling you like a completely different story of an inspiring nun who has breached all the rules and has vouched for the LGBTQ rights and has become a lesbian, has followed her dream to the fullest. Nope, no, nope, that, that just wasn't the story. And that's the sadness of this day. But cool, now this is the end of the case and I'm gonna go and exit this video and you're gonna move on with the day, it's gonna be brilliant. Listen. Happy Friday, keep getting to the bottom of the motives of why people do things and in doing so, keep making the world a better place, one motive at a time. <laughs> Bye! <laughs> because, but like it's <laughs> Stay tuned for the hilarity of the outtakes. Stay tuned. Did you? <laughs> Can't even do this, right? You okay? Are you alright? <laughs> Look at this, I love it. It's fine. It's discotheque. <laughs> discotheque. How old are you? When I say sister, I mean the term of how you... <laughs> can you... Can you call me? Can you call me today? <laughs> I need to finish recording like today. The joke is so dumb. Why are you even doing it? Do the dumb thing. Not like a best ratio to have as a nun. We're just as anybody. Who is it good there is a ratio, Maya? Like what? Nurses? If they like 21 out of 38 people die on their watch, what is good? Sorry, it's just again thinking out loud. Like I argue with myself every fucking time I record. <laughs> I don't know why it always sounds like it's a joke. Three nuns walk into the police station. What happens? What happens? Plot it out for me in the comments. Still, she'd be bowling for the time. Professional terminology used in this channel. She a bowler. Catheter. 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 It's a serious word. Give it some seriousness. Catheter. Let me, let me, let me do it. Let me do it. Catheter. Catheter. I cannot listen. Eastern Europeans can't pronounce words with T in them. Deal with it. <laughs>